Okay. All right. So for what we talked about, we're going to go over all of the bits and pieces of our equipment. This, as we spoke about, is the gantry. The gantry rotates clockwise and, and counterclockwise. The gantry itself is hooked to the drive stand or gantry stand, which is behind the gantry, holds the whole mechanism up. Okay. We have the table. It goes up, down, in, out, left, right. Okay. And it also rotates in this fashion. Okay. One of the first things we talked about on the handout was a beam's eye view. If you'll recall, we spoke that if you're looking at the patient as if you were inside the treatment machine looking straight down, that is the beam's eye view. The beam comes out of the machine toward the patient. Then you have a field. The square here represents the radiation field. Okay? You have a field size. This field has a width and a length. You also have what are called dual independent jaws. You have the length will move independently, the width will move independently. Okay? As you're looking at the beam, as you're standing looking as if the patient has their head toward the gantry and their feet toward you, you have a field size. Okay? Your field size goes as follows. X is the width. I'm moving the width right now. The width is composed of X jaws. You have X1, which is on the patient's right, your left. X2, which is on the patient's left, your right. You have the Y dimension. That's the length. Y1 is closest to you toward the patient's feet if they are laying on their back with their head in. Y2 is furthest from you as you're looking at it. Y2 is toward the, gan the, the, the gantry. So, so now, if you will, let me turn the lights back on. The field size is also denoted on what we call the, the, the readout on the gantry sometimes called the pizza board. The X dimension is right there. The Y dimension is above it. It's kind of flip-flopped from what you would think. You would think, I normally think X by Y, width by length, but they have the Y on top and the X on bottom on a varying unit, okay? You also have your gantry and collimator rotations. Like we showed before, the gantry itself rotates. The degrees that it rotates is denoted on the bottom. The collimator okay, rotates as well. It is, its degree of rotation is notated at the top. Now you may notice that when we say collimator, there are two things that we're talking about. This large apparatus that spins, also we're talking about the actual jaws inside the collimator head that limit the field size. X jaw, Y jaw, collimate or make the beam larger or smaller. Okay, so when you hear collimator, you're actually talking about two separate pieces of equipment. But normally when you're talking about collimator rotation, that's this large piece right here that actually rotates the beam itself. Let me turn the lights back off and then you can see the collimator rotation. You can see that the square itself is moving relative to the lasers. Okay, which brings us to the lasers. We have lasers in the treatment room that allow us to line the patient up. You have lasers on each side of the room. You have a sagittal that splits the patient in half. You also have an overhead that's shining at the top of the gantry right now, and back pointer lasers that shine from below. They shine from here toward the back of the patient, okay? So, generally speaking, you have one, two, three, four, five sets of lasers. We'll go over those more at a later date. So, we have the pendant, which we use to actually control the machine. As I probably said before, 
there are several buttons that you need to know about first. Room light, SSD light. Those are the two buttons that you need to know intimately on a varying unit. Now, some of you may have different equipment. Since I have a varying unit to talk to you about, that's what we're going to talk about. When I first come in the room and I'm getting a patient on the table and I start to line them up, I turn the room light off and then I also turn the SSD light off immediately. If you will observe, when you turn the room light off, the field light comes on and the SSD com light comes on. You don't need that SSD light until later. So if you get into the habit of hitting room SSD every time, then you can see your crosshair in order to line your patient up. Then when you need the SSD later, you turn it back on. Okay, so room SSD. Also, on a varian machine, there on a varian pendant, there are two little nubs. That is where you're going to know the separation between your table controls and your gantry and collimator controls. Later on in your school career and in your professional career, you'll be able to do this without looking at it. And when you first pick up the pendant, if you have your thumb right there, you can know that vertical is first, long lat, angle. You will learn that later, but I want you, for the purposes of the first quiz, hint, hint, room, SSD. Okay, pendant, the top part is the paddle, the bottom part is the handle. You also have enable bars, okay? As we mentioned, they used to be called dead man switch, but you don't ever want to say press the dead man when you have a cancer patient on the radiation therapy table. That might make them nervous. So, motion enable bars, okay? You have to squeeze both of them in order to make everything work. Just one of them? No, it's a safety feature so that you don't accidentally move something around when you already have your patient in place in space where they need to be. Okay, speaking of motion enable bars, let's move to the side of the table. As your illustration showed, you have some of the same buttons in a slightly different configuration. Okay, you can control the table from here, and this motion enable bar has to be pressed in order to do any of this. You can also unlock the table and it will be free floating if you do this. Room, field, SSD light, these three will be the ones you use the most often. Turn the room light off and on, field light off and on, SSD light off and on. Okay, they just toggle. All right, so let's go over some treatment accessories, okay? Headrest, okay? We have several headrests. They will look different depending on where you are. We happen to use the clear Silverman headrest. The patient will sit with the back of their skull here, their neck here. It will fit like this, okay? It hooks to the table and then you use an actual aquaplast mask. This is a long aquaplast. Your version and your brand could vary, but this is basically used to hold the patient in position so that they can't move around while you do the most accurate treatment possible. You'll have markings on the mask itself. You will align those to the lasers, and thus you will have a three-point setup. Okay, you want to set the patient up just like the table moves, in, out, left, right, and up, down so that you have them set up in three dimensions. It's a three-dimensional setup, okay? You may also use what's called a backlock bag. It's basically a bean bag that is formed around the patient, and then you have a vacuum and suck the air out of it, and it stays just like this, okay? This particular one was made for a patient's legs. Both of their legs fit in, and thus it partially immobilizes their legs and sets them in a position that's more reproducible. You can also have a wing board. Wing boards vary in size and shape, but this particular one is the one we use here at Texas Oncology. Okay, patient's head goes here, their arms are held here, their elbows fit on the side of the wing board, and their hands hold right here. This gets their arms up out of the way so you can do a treatment on their abdomen or chest. Um, you can also have 
various other devices for comfort and stability. This is a knee rest. It goes under their knees, obviously. You'll have a variation on almost all of these devices depending on where you're treating. Everyone of you will probably see something slightly different depending on where you are. Um, since we have many different clinics that you guys are assigned to, things can vary from place to place. Familiarize yourself with everything that you see in your particular location. Um, you can have things as simple as just a pillow for a patient's head. You can have something like a ring to hold on to. If you're treating someone's pelvis, a lot of times we'll give them a ring so that they don't have their fingers laced together. Sometimes their fingers go to sleep, they start moving. If you give them this ring, it gives them something to do, something to concentrate on, and it actually reminds them to hold still as much as anything. Plus, it gets their hands up out of the way for any treatment that you've got going on down lower, inferior on the body. Um, bolus. Bolus is tissue equivalent material, okay? It's just kind of, it's like gel. This is a two centimeter thick bolus. This would be placed on the patient's skin surface and treat you treat through the bolus. What this does is it basically, for lack of a better term, tricks the radiation into thinking the patient is thicker than they really are. Radiation will go a specific depth into the patient's um, body. When you have bolus on top of that particular area that's being treated, the radiation begins interacting with the bolus before it ever actually reaches the patient. Thus, anything that would be treated relatively deep in tissue will now be a little more shallow in tissue. Okay? It comes in all kinds of shapes and sizes and thicknesses. Okay? So there are also devices that we use that go onto the treatment machine itself. We talked about wedges. This is a wedge. Okay? It's thicker on one end than it is the other. This is the heel. This is the toe. It has a handle that goes all the way around. Your treatment plan will tell you exactly which end goes where. Just for the purposes of our demonstration, we're going to say we're going to go heel in. Okay? Let me root. I'm going to rotate the gantry to the side so that I can show you a little more clearly. There are slots that the wedge fits into. It goes in between the beam and the patient, of course. You can see that there's kind of this little plastic slot right here that the wedge is going to fit into. Now, if you have the wedge going in and the gantry's at a lateral, what you can do, first of all, I'll just show you how it slides in. You can see that it's, it's attached to a plate. The plate itself slides in and clicks into place. So that is solid. There's a little button that holds it in place so it doesn't fall out. You have to pull the button out and then pull the wedge out in order for it to come loose. Now, some of these can get kind of heavy. So what you want to do is rest the actual wedge itself on the bottom part so you have more control if it's on a lateral. Okay, so what I've done is I've kind of rested the edge in the first part of the slot on the down side, line it up, slide it in, slide it as straight as possible. If you get off, it's not going to go in properly. You need to be as straight as you can, slide, it's going to click in, it's going to be exactly where it's supposed to be. To bring it out, you can either use two hands, you can open the button and pull it out. When you handle the wedge, whenever possible, use both hands. Okay? Whenever possible, don't put it in right above the patient's face. Sometimes you're going to have to do that, and that's fine, but do it in a sa as safe a manner as possible. Okay? So I'm going to move the gantry back up and show you how to safely do that. This is something you should practice as much as possible without a patient in place until you're comfortable doing it. You need to be comfortable handling the wedge, comfortable putting it in and out of the gantry. Okay, so let's say for instance, there's a patient here where the sheet is. You don't want to try 
to hold the m most of the weight across your body like this. You want to be able to have control. So I've got control of the wedge with the, my dominant hand closest to my body. And I'm just kind of supporting it with this arm. I'm not reaching across the patient. I'm controlling it with my dominant hand. Okay. Now, I'm also going to hook it in first away from me. You have less control the further you go out from your body. It's a simple body mechanics. So you want to go ahead and kind of hook it in away from your body. That way you have good control closer to you. If you try to hook it in here, you can't see where you're going to be putting it in and you have less control. It's harder to do. So the safest thing to do is kind of hook it in on one side, get it lined up closer to you, and then slide it in. Same thing, taking it out. Unhook the switch, pull it part way out, and then grab it with both hands, smoothly pull it out, and back towards your body. When you carry it across the room, hold it closer to your body. Don't use proper body mechanics, that's what it comes down to. Okay? So, we have four wedges at this facility. There's a 15, 30, 45, and 60. The 30 degree wedge is the heaviest because it's the largest. Okay, so just be really careful with it. Now, we have an accessory mount, sometimes called a toilet seat. Because it kind of looks like a toilet seat. There is, on a varying unit, a little U shaped hook that fits into this knob at the back of the unit. Okay? There's also two little hooks closer to my face here that move like this. There's buttons on the bottom side that allows you to move the hooks. So you want to hook it in with the U-shaped hook, basically, kind of lost where I was, and then you're going to just push it straight up in and it clicks into place. You want to make sure it's actually clicked into place. You don't want this falling off on a patient. Taking it off is pretty much the reverse. These two buttons that I showed you that move the hooks back, you need to push them both in, unhook it, and then bring it back towards your body. Okay? So once again, hook it on the knob, click it into place. Always hold on to it with both hands. Now, once we have this in place, you can see that there is another set of runners just like for the wedge at the top. This is where we're going to put our electron cone on. I'm going to go get a cone and bring it back over. Now, when you carry a cone, once again, carry close to your body, good body mechanics. But when you put the cone in place, control it as much as possible. Exactly like when you put in the wedge, you're going to go away from you first because it's harder to control the further it out is it is from your body. Okay, and this is going to slide right into place. Once you get it started, don't let go of it. Push it at the plate. Don't push it down here. Push it straight in where it slides. If you push down here, you're actually torquing the whole thing. You're, you're actually making half of the movement down here, and it actually puts a lot of pressure on the plate. You want to slide in easily and smoothly. Okay? When you take it out, it's exactly the same as with the wedge. There's a little button here. You can pull it away. It releases it. You see, you saw a little red light came on. That's kind of a warning light saying it's loose. Grab it close up toward the top so you have more control over it. Don't grab it down here. Grab it close to the top. Pull it out. Once it's completely loose, pull it with both hands and then back towards your body. Okay? Okay? Always do all of your sliding up close to where the accessory mount is. Now, you saw that when I pull this out, there's a red button. Okay, anytime you pull something off, it's going to cause that red button to come on. What that does is it locks everything. You can't move anything on the machine until you have satisfied that button saying, okay, I'm good. I know that I have taken a piece of the accessory off. I'm going to acknowledge that by pushing the button and cause everything to come back to life, basically. Now, on the cone itself, there's a collision ring. Okay? 
It's on this particular type of unit, it's just kind of an air-filled bladder. If it comes in contact with a patient, it makes the red button come on. It actually locks everything out. I can't move the table. I can't do anything. I couldn't turn on the beam. I couldn't treat this patient. And what is best is it's going to keep me from impaling the patient with this piece of equipment. For instance, if you had a patient that was really close and you moved it up into, it's going to keep you from actually hurting the patient. See it? Put just a little bit of pressure on this, a little bit of pressure on the collision ring, cause the motors to get locked out. Okay. So, that is how to put in an electron cover. Okay, so I'm trying to think if there's any other devices that we cover in class that I need to go ahead and cover at this point. I think that's it. Alright. I guess you can edit that last bit. Last bit.